Hello and welcome to your August 2023 full moon reading. Now in this video we're gonna cover cover both full moons that we have in August because indeed there's two in one month, the second one on the 31st, the first one on the 1st of August and the second one is actually more powerful even than the first one and a second full moon in a month is called a blue moon. Um, but we will get there. The point I'm trying to make here is we will cover both full moons in this video, but for your convenience the video is time-stepped. So if you're here after August the 1st and you only want to know about the, um, the super moon on the 31st, you just go to the description box and click the timestamp and click there you are and you can watch just the 31st. Now, are you ready? So, the Full moons in August 2023 are both supermoons and they are part of a series of four supermoons that all happen in a row in 2023. The first one was in July, then we have two supermoons in August and one in September. Now, a supermoon happens when the moon is closest to Earth, therefore it appears larger. Um, and that's why I got that name, supermoon. Now, the interesting thing is obviously the moon doesn't doesn't grow larger than it is, but because it is closer to to us, um, it appears larger. Now the point is, the moon governs our emotions, and the closer the moon is to you and to your emotions, the more emotional you will feel. And so let's have a look at these uh, two moons um, on a whole, and then let's talk about it. So the first one. The, the one in um, on August the 1st. And I have to make some notes because um, sometimes I get sidetracked and don't remember a fucking thing. <laughs> so the first moon on August the 1st is in the sign of Aquarius, which is the sign of the giver, so the water bearer. So what you can expect is that your emotions will spill outward. So you will feel way more emotional probably than you normally would be and that's not always bad because it is important to to be honest about how you're truly feeling um, so you can expect to be um, if you are emotionally compromised for whatever reason if you're already feeling emotionally compromised which is a bit of a weird term on the full moon you will be a mess <laughs> but it just means that you know honor how you're feeling and it will also show you then around the full moon who you can trust and who you can't trust because you should really be allowed to uh, express your emotions at all times without being judged really really important to look around so here is what the august the first full moon means stands for and brings there's a couple of things you have to actually look at or ought to just be aware of number one the august first uh, full moon super moon is happening on a Tuesday. Now Tuesday is the day of Mars, which means the energy of Mars is the strongest that day since it is a supermoon that also is amplified. Now the problem is that Mars has a fiery energy, um, very in your face, um, which doesn't help when the full moon or the supermoon in this case is in Aquarius. Doesn't mean that the super clash, but the idea here is as follows. The sign it is in is the sign of Aquarius. Aquarius is an air sign. Now here's the thing, um, Aquarius by default being associated with giving and, and associated with, with water. So, um, you know, because Aquarius has to do with uh, tears and water and renewal, but it's an air sign. So air signs uh, by default don't really gel super well with the element of water, right? If that makes sense. Uh, but Aquarius is super drawn to the element of water, but it's an air sign. So the point I'm trying to make here in a roundabout way is that sometimes in the lifetime of an Aquarius, if you should be Aquarius and if you're not, it's just information, at times you feel a touch disconnected. And because Mars is right very prominent on August the 1st, and the moon sits in 
in the air sign that therefore has issues uh, not being in water and water sort of opposing fire almost if that makes sense even though elements do work together but as you can see just by by association you put water on fire and fire is no more <laughs> right so um, there is an energy here of being disconnected now should you feel and this is not just for Aquarians but should you feel or should you have difficulties on August the 1st figuring out where to go from here, what to do with your emotions. The first thing you should probably know is that there are meridians or pressure points that your body has um, that can help you with, um, with directing, redirecting energy. So um, I will put a link here, or sorry, a picture here now so that you can, you can see this, I'll put it here in, in, in a second. Ultimately, there's two pressure points <coughs> for Mars in your hand. And they sort of lie around here. You can go and say, like, I'm affected by, <coughs> by the directness of Mars, especially on the supermoon. Um, because heaven was Tuesday, like I said, Tuesday is the day of Mars. There's two points here that you can press simultaneously just to say to Mars, work with me, not against me. And I'm uh, putting that um, palmistry uh, picture up right now. So it should... Um, you should hear me talk, but should see that picture at this point in time. So, um, that's it. Are we back? Looks like it. <laughs> so, the um, the energy of a, of a, of a supermoon tends to stay with us. So you can normally feel that there's a full moon coming. And you can certainly understand that while that full moon ebbs out, which is a weird term, um, for the next two or three days after the full moon, we're still in full moon energy. So it is important to then realize where is the energy going or, in, in, in fact, where is the moon going. Now what happens is, because the super moon is happening on uh, the 1st of August, on the 2nd and the 3rd, which is quite interesting, the moon is actually near Saturn. And Saturn is the energy that tells you to do less. Saturn is one of three spiritual teachers right, in astrology and the, the way Saturn works is through restriction. So doing much less is the energy that Saturn brings to the table. Since we are still in the full moon energy on the second and the third and the moon is close to Saturn, try not to overreact. So remember, it is a super moon. Closer to Earth, you will be way more emotional than usual. Um, the super moon, the full moon, sits in Aquarius, the water bearer, the giver. Therefore, you want to express how you're feeling. And the energy of Mars is not quite, not quite supportive in the sense that Mars is in your face. And you don't want to be, um, sounds a bit wrong, but you don't want to get nasty when you make your points to whoever you need to make those points to, which is quite important. Now, um, on, on August the 8th, we will not or no longer be in the energy of the full moon or the super moon. But what is important here is to realize that obviously, you know, time moves on and so will you. Um, but because the, the, the super moon is quite draining sometimes, quite tiring as well, if you're looking for an energy day or a day of energy that is super high in, in uh, August, it will be August the 8th because the moon is literally right next to Jupiter. Now, Jupiter is the first planet that has ever formed. So the idea is that when the moon is near Jupiter, you already remember any and every emotion you ever felt, therefore you will come to the realization is that no matter what is happening to you, you have been through this before and you will get through this at any time in your life. But Jupiter is also the happy-go-lucky planet. So on the 8th of August, put that in your diary, you will feel much more content and light-hearted. So use that energy to manifest, use that energy to go out and um, play a little have some fun. And because the energy of the moon and, and Jupiter are connected on the 8th, um, really, really important 
to our conscious about the, 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 the combination, the combo of these two energies um, really, really helping you. Okay? So, that concludes, in a roundabout way, the, 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 the first full moon, the full moon on, on um, August the 1st. Let me just get a sip of coffee here. And now we're looking at the, the second um, full moon, which is a blue moon. Right. So as you can see here, on uh, my tattoo is a depiction of a um, blue moon, hence it is much darker, much more blue. And the blue moon is not super rare. People always think, you know, there's this saying, you know, oh, everyone's in the blue moon, you know, oh, every blue moon, there's a there's saying about denoting time, you know. Um, this only comes around every, you know, every, in every blue moon. The point is that the blue moon is not as irregular as you would think. On average, because time doesn't really play ball, on average, a blue moon, which is happening on August 31st, comes around roughly every, every 26 months. Or, and or, every sort of... <laughs> Two and a half years. So that depends if that makes sense. It's not it's not quite as even. But because it comes around every 2.5 years or every 26 months, um, it actually gives you a boost instead of draining you. So as I said, this is these are super moons. So the super moon means it's uh, the, the moon is closer to Earth, the closest uh, when the Earth sorry, when the moon is close to Earth, your emotions will be highlighted. Now the blue moon, the second full moon of the months is even more powerful, powerful energetically speaking, than the first uh, uh, full moon is. Now, full moons are always powerful. And super moons are even more so. Now, and then you can add another layer of awesomeness and another layer of what the fuck is going on energy to the second full moon. So the point is, how you are going to be affected by the by the full moon is very uh, by the by the blue moon rather is very individual, very very individual. The point is, when it comes to powerful energies of any full moon, the blue moon on August the thirty first will be the most powerful moon in the year, because of the year, uh, because it is a blue moon. Now. What that means is everything that's happening is way more amplified, is way more uh, you, you, palpable, you feel it way more. Now the good thing is, because the, the, the universe is bloody awesome, <laughs> is that the, um, the blue moon is happening, if I'm not mistaken, let me just have a look, yeah, it's happening on a Thursday. Thursday is the day of Jupiter. Jupiter is the, is the planet that formed the first, just like I said, and um, so the energy here is on the on the blue moon is to not despair. It's remembering no matter what that day brings or what that energy brings, you've been through it all more than you can count and more often than you can count. So in other words, um, the energy on the on the thirty first will be quite high and quite positive. So while the energy is strongest. Um, so on the blue moon, so it's it's not like any other full moon. This one you will really feel. It is a positive energy that you will also feel on top of everything. So it's quite quite a powerful um, energy that will hit you on August the thirty first. Now the interesting thing as well is that um, because it happens on the day of Jupiter, the full moon itself <clears throat> sits in the sign of Pisces. Pisces is the sign of the dreamer. But Jupiter used to be, now you know things change, you know, but Jupiter used to be one of two uh, governing planets that Pisces have. They have removed it, which means the, um, you know, as, um, you know, whoever makes up that shit, really, you know, Jupiter has been uh, associated with Pisces for a long time. So just because someone removes it from a list doesn't mean it's not happening. Same happens to Pluto. Remember, Pluto is now um, no longer properly counted uh, since it has been deemed a dwarf planet in 2006. Pluto doesn't probably give a shit. Uh, you know, so the, the point is Jupiter and Pisces have always been linked and will remain linked whether or not they are officially counted or not. 
What that means is that since the full moon sits in Pisces, <clears throat> Jupiter, which is the happy-go-lucky planet, have some fun, can only be a very positive thing. Now, you combine this with this being the strongest moon of the year, since this is a blue moon, which only comes around, as I mentioned, uh, every 26 months and sometimes every two and a half years. So this is not a moon that you have to worry about at any stage. <clears throat> so I always say that, that we are obviously um, in the energy of a, of, a, of a full moon for quite some time, but I want to go forward in time. The full moon, the, the, the blue moon, the super moon, you know, too many terms, is happening on August the 31st in the sign of Pisces. What you therefore can expect is to be emotionally quite open. You know, Pisces is the sign of the dreamer. Pisces is that sign that that goes into um, escapism sometimes. You know, you just do something else. The depiction of Pisces is two fish or fishes. Don't even remember, know how, what the proper term is. That are denoted by doing this. So there's two fish that swim away and come back together. So Pisces by default can be a bit all over the place. <laughs> and um, and sometimes needs need time out, need me time. All that applies to the energy of that super moon, blue moon, full moon, because it is in Pisces. So by all means, on August the 31st, take time out. Don't engage with people if you don't want to engage, right? Because you are quite vulnerable to uh, and quite emotional um, on any given full moon. Since it's a blue moon, even more so. Now, what I want to say is that when, as we're coming out of the energy of the August 31st blue moon, full moon, super moon, on September the 4th, which is a couple of days later, I just made some notes here, I don't know if you can see them. Anyway, on, on the 4th, we're going into the energy of Jupiter. What that means is that Jupiter will be very close to the moon on September the 4th. Now, while you think this might not be uh, affecting you at all, the point is that you have, that you have to deal with quite a, a powerful emotional surge on August the 31st, and all you have is to be honest to yourself, and, and you can expect a lot of release because it sits in Pisces, which is the sign of the dreamer, but it's also governed by Neptune. Um, and Neptune as a planet and as an energy um, is all about understanding your depth. And so your deepest emotions will come to the fore on August the 31st. Now, on, on September the 4th, when the moon is then near Jupiter, one of the um, governing planets of, of, uh, of Pisces, which the, the August moon 31st sits in. No matter what sign you are, every time the moon is near Jupiter, you will have high energy and you will be quite lighthearted. And so use September the 4th as the day following the August 31st blue moon for you to charge your energy. Really, really important. The other thing that's going to happen that you can expect is on September the 4th. Again, we're coming out of the August um, 31st full moon energy and we're looking for when can we um, recharge our batteries after feeling so emotional. That's sort of the bottom line here. And what will happening on the 4th is that the moon is very close to the Pleiades. Now, in the origin story of the Native Americans, we come from the stars. And we come from a place called the Pleiades, which is a constellation above Taurus. Now, because we only live here on Earth, if that makes sense, right? Um, that's probably why we're not really the best shepherds when it comes to living on, on, on Earth. <clears throat> and we actually know less about Earth than we know about the stars. But the point I'm trying to make here is that when it comes to being connected to who you truly are, September the 4th is the day. You're probably wondering why I talk about September the 4th when the full moon is on the, on the 31st. That's because you are always governed by your emotions in, to a large extent and also always governed by what the moon is up to. And the moon, as it moves out from being a full moon and then you know has another uh, two weeks after this to become the new moon, all that kind of stuff, um, it is always good to understand that wherever the moon is, whatever is next to it, affects you. And on, on September the 4th, the moon goes home. 
and you are going home to the Pleiades. So what you can expect, therefore, on September the 4th is ancestral issues flaring up, family members reaching out, things that you haven't solved with your family members cropping up into your system. Right? So just be aware that September the 4th is the day where your ancestral connections are the strongest and should you already feel lost, September the 4th will be the day where you kind of go like, oh, I don't belong anywhere. And the universe is saying, shut up, because you do belong. And we're here. right? So you will go home that day, if that makes sense. Um, I always find it important to mention this because I see a lot of people that, do, um, that look at full moons. And I see also a lot of readers, bless them, that only talk about the full moon. There's so much more going on because you are existing therefore you are a continuation of your own timeline and understanding that the moon always affects you in any fa in all phases that it has um, or that she has rather uh, really really important to understand that a couple of days after the full moon as you're coming out of the energy you need to recharge and september the 4th 2023 is the day for you to do just that but be aware that your ancestral energy is super high because the moon is next to the Pleiades, where you and I are sort of from. In any case, that's all we really got. Um, just be aware that the August 31st moon sits in Pisces, so you will be super emotional because the blue moon is the strongest of all moons, only comes around every 26 months or and or every two and a half years. So be prepared to be um, affected and allow yourself to feel everything that you feel and allow yourself to feel all that comes your way. It is meant for you to learn to let go, learn to cleanse yourself, allow yourself to um, show your emotions and learn to tell people off that don't allow you to show your emotions. These people should not be in your life because Whatever you feel is part of you. You should be allowed to express yourself. Ah, that's it. We're through. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Um, I hope you enjoyed the two full moons covered in this um, video. If you want to also access um, monthly videos about your specific and individual sign, you can also find that here on the channel. So please like, subscribe and share. Really, really important if you like my work. You can buy me a coffee on buymeacoffee.com forward slash medium thomas. That's buymeacoffee.com forward slash medium thomas. That's all we got. See you all very soon. Bye bye.